here we are again. This is it. Cheers. Cheers, man. We're doing this podcast now, and we're doing it over one beer. One uh, beer. We're getting into one issue every drink, week. Drink slowly. Yes, you got to sip it. Got to nurse these. Uh, and you know, the funny thing is, is and we talked about this. Neither one of us is much of a beer guy. Here's what's interesting about us. Both Jason, yeah. both last name W, we work at the same place. Yes. We're born four days apart. Which is bizarre. It's crazy. And he is- You in Texas, me in Tennessee. And he is four days older. Four days, and I, I have a lot, more, a lot more gray to oh, show for as well. Under there. For all this time, I just always assumed, I think, even though you've told me over the, over the years, I just keep on putting you back in the bucket of native Texan. Really? Because you just seem like one. Well, you're yeah. grandfathered in. I mean, you've Tennessee been here forever. Tennessee is where the native Texans are from, anyways. Well, I, David well, Bowie, you, you Sam like Houston, that. you name it. The original <laughs> Texans are from Tennessee. Okay. So that's why I, I guess say. we have to give you a little something. What there. can you say? Remember the Alamo? Yeah. Been in, in Dallas 12 years, almost 13 years. Houston, and, uh, too. Houston, eight years before that, so two decades in Texas. Yeah. My mom used to watch you in Houston. Really? Yeah, she was big she Jason She grew up Whiteley. watching you, right? Oh, yeah, big Jason <laughs> right. Whiteley fan. Yeah, right. <laughs> Reminded her of her own son. Right, you know? yeah. Born four days apart. Well, you know, it's funny, though, that we, you know, we're both JWs, born four days apart, same year, uh, and we sort of have this parallel existence because, right. it, like, people constantly get us confused. And, and I don't know how. I mean, you're the put together guy, and I'm not. I, I, <laughs> you know? I don't know about that, but we, we get each other's emails all the time, which yeah. is fascinating. I always each know when it's an email that's meant for you or a voicemail meant for you because, like, I'll start to play it or I'll start to read it, and I think, wow, this sounds very positive. Let me keep reading, and, <laughs> and it still sounds positive. And I think, oh, this is this was for Jason Whiteley, and sure enough, one of our own colleagues the other day <laughs> sent an email to me saying. You know, I'm going to be on your four o'clock newscast today, and here's what you should ask me. I'm like, clearly you have the wrong Jason here. Let me forward it on to Jason. Hoover. You know, it's funny. I've almost sent because I send emails to myself all the time as reminders. Right. And I've almost sent emails, reminder emails to you. Because you type in JWH and, and boom, you pop and, up. And You're the first up. thing that pops up, even though I come first in the alphabet. Yeah, true. Born in Houston. Born in Houston. You worked in San Antonio. I have worked, this is interesting, I have worked in every major television market in the state of Texas. Really? Except Houston, where I grew up. Really? Yeah, I interned there, but I've worked in San Antonio, Austin, El Paso, and Dallas Fort Worth. Wow. I had no weird? idea. That is weird. But they never want you back at home again. Mm -hmm. And I even say the name of the city correctly, Houston. Y Houston. 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 Instead of Houston, the way That's I say so it. so much work to get that H going before <laughs> you say it. It's Houston. <laughs> used to water ski as a kid on the bios around Houston. Are and you kidding me? Now you think back on that and you think, what kind of parenting was that? There's alligators in those waters. Snakes, alligators, Horrible. there's zero visibility. Yeah, and a 12-year-old. I feel like I've uh, entered a, a whole new uh, world when I head back to Galveston. I know some people don't care for it. They talk about the water not being blue enough and all that, and that's all that's true. But it's still the coast, and yeah. it's it's the Texas coast. Right. You, so you have to appreciate it for what it is. But it's a great place. And the Texas coast is a lot like this podcast. It's super laid back. Yes. It's not uppity. It's not, you know, all it's buttoned not. up or things like that. I really yeah. like that about it because right. I, I think that, you know, I think we're on the same wavelength with a lot of things. And, and you know, we, we like to have a little bit of fun and also get the information, right. you know. I worked in Nashville. Nashville's the state capital uh, in Tennessee. Um, I moved up to St. Louis, Missouri. We'd drive over <laughs> to uh, uh, Jefferson City, the state capital there. And even in Houston, when I worked there for eight years, I was always a backup guy mm. to the main political reporter. I was just fascinated by it, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, for whatever reason. And then uh, moved up here, I was a backup guy here for a while to uh, Brad Watson. Who oh, worked Brad Watson. Forever. Brad Watson, Channel 8 News. Eight feet tall. Yeah. The king, you know, the he master. The master. Um, and then when Brad left, and Brad decided to, uh, to leave TV, you were the I, was, guy. I was the last guy standing, I think. <laughs> hey, uh, and persistence so they pays They felt off. sorry for me. No. They felt sorry for me, and they put me in that position. We all know how much it seems like the political climate has changed 
you know, in just these last fascinating cycles, the last decade, let's say. Uh, how much has it changed what you do, like in in what you do? I mean, it's like you have to be. It seems like more careful than ever because everybody's yeah. waiting for you to say just the wrong thing, uh, or waiting to prove that you have this slant or that. Right. Uh, so, how much has that changed the job? It's. It's been fascinating. When, when uh, a few years ago, Wendy Davis, when she was still a state sen state senator from uh, Fort Worth, she had her um, uh, filibuster in the state senate, mm -hmm. and so we were down there for three or four days. And on, like day three or four, I start running low on suits and ties. Wear the suit a second day, fine, whatever. But I yeah. put a different tie on, so I didn't like the same guy from the day before. At the time, I had an orange tie. I put an orange tie on. Well, all of Wendy Davis's supporters uh. decided to buy T-shirts. No to support her and then put Wendy Davis or something like that on it. What color t-shirt can oh, you get when you're in Austin? Orange. Orange shirt. It's everywhere. I had an orange tie on and I get all these hateful tweets. Oh, you just proved your bias right there. I'm like, dude, it's an orange tie. Relax. Take it easy. It's amazing. They look at everything. It's and amazing. I can, you know, I can, whatever, I can respect that. But, you know, look at the reporting. Yeah. When it comes down to it, look at the reporting. If you have a thought about political issues, you have to check those at the door to do this for a living. Some people don't believe that we do check that right. at the door, but we check that at the door. Right. Um, I think that it would be good for everyone to do a job like this so that they could check those things at the door because I think that when you have to not express your own views, you become a better listener. I think over the years, the more that I have done this, and I've got to put my personal thoughts about things aside and actually get out there and gather both sides and listen to both sides, or sometimes it's more than two sides, it's three or four sides. When you have to listen to all of that and put it together in a coherent way and knowing that you're going to be watched and, and fact-checked and kept honest by everybody involved, you listen differently, and I think it makes you more tolerant of other people's viewpoints. Those six letters, L-I-S-T-E-N. The world will be a different place if people listen. Yeah. If people listen. We've talked to experts who say that, yeah, there's a scramble on to capture these new people, but we don't think either party's doing a great job of doing it. And that's why there is yolitics. To put some education out there, we're all at least going to be able to know what the facts are on the right. ground because we're not hearing this from trained speakers who have a, a you know a list of talking points that they've got to take off with us and then they're on to the next show to do the same thing. We're talking to real people who are affected by these things or who are down in these things and know the real story. Yeah. And Pulling we're pulling back those curtains. And we're letting we're letting the listeners hear directly from them in an extended format as opposed to just a soundbite like we've been serving to them for years. Yeah. That's, that's the difference here. It's not a bunch of guys sitting around a studio. We have a nice studio. They want us to record in the studio. We're like, no, let us go out and talk to these folks wherever they are. Yeah, and, and that's what we're doing. And, and even better when it's a picnic table somewhere with a couple of beers on it. As long as the sunshine, at least. <laughs>